Alright guys, so you want to be able to flip your multi-tool like a bell song, right? So the first video looks like a lot of fun, not to mention it's also very practical because you can get this open with one hand and use your main tool here, which is your pliers. But there's a couple tips I can give you on doing this. Now, as a lot of you have already guessed, it's a combination of um, being very, very well oiled as well as being overly used and loose, literally being loose, okay? So tip number one, I'm gonna highly recommend, if you're gonna do this, do it with a cheap multi-tool. This is a no-name brand multi-tool. I got this from a viewer. Um, it was already loose. One side was more loose than the other, so I'm still working on the other side. I'll show you that in a second here. Um, and that's kind of what gave me the idea to go ahead and make this my, my Bawa Song multi-tool. Um, I've tried this over the years with uh, Leatherman's and Gerber. Um, I have no personal experience with uh, Victorinox ones, but I would assume it's the same. The higher quality of the tool, the harder it's gonna to be to do this, with one exception. Okay, this has pinned construction. Okay, think of it like a bell song, right? There's uh, actually pins that are riveted in, so it's non-adjustable. The one good thing about the multi-tools that have uh, Torx um, screw heads or anything that's adjustable is you can loosen it. Okay, that's gonna be a big benefit. So if you do happen to have a model that has, um, you know, Torx or let's say Allen, Allen head screws, you can loosen it up a little bit and then use some Loctite to make sure it's gonna still stay together. There's a fine line there because when you loosen it, if you don't Loctite it properly, it will come apart and it will become dangerous because pieces are gonna go flying across the room, not to mention you're gonna lose them and you probably have a hard time finding them and putting it back together. So I do still recommend doing this with a cheap multi-tool, okay? So that's the good news. You don't have to go out and buy a really expensive multi-tool. You can find one on eBay or Amazon or you know, wherever, anywhere online or a flea market for that matter. The cheaper, the better. You do want to get a full size one just because it's going to be easier. A lot of the uh, pocket or keychain sized multi tools are very cheap as well, but try to stay away from them. You want something that's kind of full sized here. All right, so tip number two, okay? Everything we're going to be doing, we're going to be doing at this side of the multi tool, okay? Where the handles are attached to the head of the pliers. This is all we're working on here. Very, very important that all the other tools in your multi-tool do not move. You do not want to be flipping this around and have your knife blade come out, okay? Or your very pointy little flathead screwdriver or your scissors or anything for that matter. Doesn't matter if on the inside of the handle, doesn't matter if the tools are on the outside of the handle. You wanna make sure that this stays nice and tight. If anything, if you have adjustable screw heads on here, you wanna tighten it down even further to make sure these do not come out with centrifugal force by you swinging it around. Okay, all we want this to be able to do is pivot easily, okay, with the head, not the other tools. Now, if you must, if you have a cheap one, a lot of times these tools will get loose as well. If you need to, put a piece of electrical tape around one time on each handle just to make sure 100% these are not going to open. All right, tip number three, and this is an optional step, but if you want this to be quieter flipping, okay, i.e. less of those clicking noises, you can put a piece of electrical tape around the head of your pliers. This will keep them together so they aren't able to open and click, okay? This will give more of a feel of a traditional bow song where this is a solid blade as opposed to two pieces that are moving. So you have this moving as well as the handles moving. All right, makes it a little bit easier to start off with, and then eventually you can take the tape off and then you're a little bit more used to it, okay? So as you hear, there's lots of extra clicks as opposed to when you're flipping a battle song. All right, so to recap here, tip number one, use a cheap model. Tip number two, make sure these are nice and tight in there. If they're not tight, throw some tape around it. And tip number three, which is optional for a quieter flipping session, tape your head of your pliers together. All right, so all we're gonna be doing is basically loosening up these two pivot areas, okay? Now when you look inside your tool, you're gonna to see, actually give you this view here, you're gonna see all the different pieces of metal that are lined up with the hole drilled out and the pin through it, whether it's a pin or a screw or whatever. What we wanna do is be able to make this nice and loose. There's a couple ways to accomplish this. Again, if it's adjustable, you can loosen it up a little bit, but you know, very, very important, you make sure you use that Loctite, otherwise it's gonna fall apart. In this case, when you can't open it up, what you wanna do is lots and lots of wear, okay? So what you're gonna do is literally hours and hours of opening and closing this, okay? You can do it manually like this, you can use your hand, okay? 
And this is going to start to loosen up this pin and the tools that are in there as well. You're going to be opening up that hole very, very slightly over time. In addition to that, you want to make sure that you use lots and lots of oil in between all those metal parts to reduce the friction. Okay, again, because this is cheap and because this is very used, the one side here is very, very loose. As you can see, this kind of naturally opens. There's almost no friction here. Okay, this is perfect. This is very ideal. Whereas the other side, not so much. You see it's a lot stiffer, still has some movement. But even as I open this, you see that it wants to move the head, it's sticking. As opposed to the other side, which is much, much looser, okay? So what that tells me is that the original owner used this side of the handle a lot more. Whether they were trying to flip it or not, it doesn't matter. So this side's very loose, it's perfect, ready to go. This side I've still been working on. Now, with momentum and centrifugal force, you can force that handle out, all right? But the stiffer these pivot areas are, the tighter it is and the drier it is, the harder it is to get that momentum. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna wanna stick and it's gonna throw you off and it's gonna be hard to flip it. All right, so the looser, the better. So there you go guys, hopefully these tips will help you get your cheap multi-tools into uh, balisome mode so you can have some fun flipping them. And again, like I said, a little bit more convenient because you can use them one-handed if you are actually using them for the intended purpose. Um, one last tip I can give you too, if you happen to have adjustable hardware, all right, you can remove the blade and or blades of your multi-tool to make it legal more places. Okay, there's a lot of places that don't allow knives and pretty much every multi-tool has at least a main blade in it. Uh, many variants have saw blades or even bottle openers can be considered a blade if they're thin enough. Awls, anything that can be you know misconstrued as a weapon. But uh, what you can do really is take out all the tools and just have the pliers. Okay, so these handles are empty. Number one, you don't have to worry about uh, these things falling out on you when you're flipping it. Number two, this isn't really seen as a weapon most places. Okay, so if you want to take it where knives are prohibited, I would certainly recommend doing that mod. However, the one exception is school. Even if you take all the knives out, I don't recommend bringing these to school because a lot of times schools are uptight. And uh, you know what, when you're at school, you should probably be focusing on your work. <laughs> so if you're a kid and you're thinking about doing this, don't. You should probably just study instead and play with these things when you get home. So there you go, there's my, uh, my tips. Hopefully it helped you guys out. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you soon. Take care.